As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. Welcome to the program, Denise. Thank you, Rick. Denise, what did you do in your family on December 31st when you were growing up? Well, on December 31st, we just sat there and kind of went to bed. I mean, you know, we just we just watched television a little bit. We didn't do anything on December 31st. But but January the 1st, we had black-eyed peas and ham every year. Our families were so different. Denise's parents were older. My parents were younger. Her family didn't have a lot of friends. My family was baptized in friends. Our house was like a revolving door where we were always at somebody else's house. And on December 31st, while it is such a precious memory of my childhood, we were always at the Ramey's house. And we celebrated. We had popcorn. We watched television. And we also ate Black-eyed peas. What was the deal about black-eyed peas on New Year's? I don't know. What did you eat on New Year's when you were growing up? Did you all have black-eyed peas? Uh, but we were always excited about New Year's and New Year's Day. We always watched all the parades on New Year's parades. Day. All the parades. We watched the parades. Macy's Day parade. Yes. So many parades. And my sister was a baton twirler. <laughs> so she was always in parades. So we were always downtown Tulsa. I remember as a little bitty boy freezing. Uh, on January the 1st, watching the Tulsa New Year's Day Parade, waiting for Rhonda to come by, twirling her baton, waiting and waiting and waiting so we could leave and get in the car because it was so cold. That's what we did on New Year's Day. Well, and Rick, in my high school, I was the drummer. You, I have never <laughs> known. My friends, I am getting a revelation on TV today. My wife was a drummer. I was. We had to. We had on these little short skirts, and those little sweaters, and we walked down the streets of Miami, Oklahoma, and we and I played my little drums. Honey, why have you never told me you were a drummer? Honey, you know there's just secrets about me that just keep unfolding. Well, that is absolutely <laughs> true. Every man knows that about his wife. She is a mystery that is constantly unfolding. Hey, but today it's the end of the year. It's time for you to close a chapter and begin a new chapter. Mm -hmm. In front of you is a glorious new year. It's going to be awesome mm -hmm. what God's going to do for you in the new year. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if you want somebody to pray with you, call us. We would love to pray with you, believe God with you to close this chapter well and to start the new chapter right. Amen. And we're offering you our series called Decisions. Are you going to follow through this time? Comes in multiple formats, it's five parts, and it comes with a great study guide. We're also offering you my book. I just love this book. You know, I wrote this book the year we moved to the Soviet Union. It's really very appropriately titled, The Point of No Return, Tackling Your Next New Assignment with Courage and Common Sense. Mm -hmm. It was written with such a sense of destiny and revelation because Denise and I and our family we had passed the point of no return. This book is just loaded with insight if you know that God's beckoning you to do something new and you don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. This book will help you know how to do it. You can do anything, anything God is asking you to do. You just need to know how. And that's why I call this Tackling Your Next New Assignment with Courage and Common Sense. You can do it. And for anyone who becomes a partner, by the way, it's the end of the year. It'd be a great time for you to make a decision to partner with our ministry. If we've been a blessing to you, and I pray that we have, would you please pray about joining us as a partner? We're not begging for money. We're just looking for people who want to impact other people's lives. And if you want to help us take the teaching of God's word to people that are really crying for somebody to bring it, partner with us. Financially support our ministry You'll help us take this teaching to other people. And for those who become financial partners, we send them my book, Life in the Combat Zone. So powerful. What a great way for your new year to get started. And Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness. Look, it's small, but this book is filled with power. When I read this book, 
I said, wow, that is small, but power can come in small packages. Anyway, we send both of these to anyone who begins a partnership relationship with our ministry. Denise? I just want to say thank you to you partners. You mean so much to us. And, and we just can't thank you enough. We love you. We pray for you. You are with us in this ministry, in this adventure that we're on with God. You are there with us. Thank you so much. Well, today we're talking about making decisions. This is the time of the year when people are deciding, okay, what am I going to do in the new year? In the very early years of our ministry, when Denise and I were traveling, we had a small car. It was me and Denise. Paul and Philip. Joel wasn't even born yet. For some reason, for several years, we ended up in Oregon on the coast in a place called Cannon Beach. And about midnight, a little bit before midnight, I would go to a restaurant in Cannon Beach and I would sit with my Bible with a piece of paper and I would begin to write the things that I felt the Lord wanted me to accomplish once we passed over into the new year. And that became a tradition in my life. It's still a tradition in my life today to make very important decisions on December 31st. Well, this week we're talking to you about making decisions. Yesterday, Denise and I talked to you about losing weight. I hope we encouraged you. And today we're going to talk to you about the next decision. Now, don't turn off the TV and don't turn off your device because we have compassion about this subject. But it is making the decision to begin to... Are you ready? Physically exercise. Now, the word exercise to me was always like a four-letter word. But there's a problem because it has eight letters. It's not a four-letter word, but I kind of looked at it like a four-letter word. Don't say that word exercise around me. I was really not one given to exercise as a youth. I was not one given to exercise as a young man. In fact, never in my life really have I exercised. But several years ago, when I made the decision, the decision to lose weight, I also made a decision to begin to physically exercise. Really, when you make a decision, you're repenting. Decisions are the main core of repentance. The word repentance means to make a decision to be different. So when you make a decision to lose weight, you're repenting. When you make a decision to begin exercising, you're repenting for a lack of exercise and you're making a decision to be different. Well, for years and years and years, Denise and I talked about it. But you know, talking about something doesn't, it doesn't get anything done. You have to do something. You have to jump in the race. And through the years, we wasted a lot of money on bicycle machines, treadmills, trampolines. And you know what we learned in all those early years? You can hang a lot of clothes on a treadmill and a bicycle machine. Oh, on that treadmill, I was so thankful for it because I could just hang those things <laughs> right on it that we didn't have room for in our closet. But you know what? I would get so convicted every time I walked by it. I thought, oh, yeah, that's right. We bought that to hang clothes on, not we bought that so I could do something to get my body stronger. And then Denise said, I want a trampoline, a little tiny trampoline. So we bought a trampoline. You know what? When you run out of space on your shelves for books, <laughs> you can put a lot of books on a trampoline. <laughs> Our trampoline had stacks and stacks <laughs> and stacks of books on it. <laughs> it did. I remember in that one room, we put it in there and put books on top of it. I remember when we decided to get rid of the trampoline, I said, well, where am I going to put my books? <laughs> so if you're one who has wasted a lot of money on exercise machines, or you've bought an entrance to an exercise club and then you never went, don't be condemned. We all understand. Condemnation doesn't do anything. You just need to make a Decision. Decision. And that's what we're going to talk to you about today. So today, hope you have your Bible because today Denise and I are going to go to our Bibles and we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26. This really is the anchor verse for this series. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26, Paul was talking about jumping in the race to accomplish whatever God has put in front of you. Yesterday, we talked about jumping in the race to lose weight. Today, we're going to talk about jumping in the race to start physically exercising. Please don't turn off the television. 
please don't turn off your device. Listen to this. We're going to encourage you today. You need to exercise. If you want to live long, you need to exercise. You're tired of feeling bad. You know, I had a problem with my back. I had people pray for me, lay hands on me. I took authority over it. And one day the Lord spoke to me and said, you know what? You don't really need to pray about this. If you'll just do some push-ups, you'll strengthen your back and the problem will go away. I just needed to do something physically to strengthen my core. And that's what I did. And by the way, exercise changed my life. And now every single day, Denise can tell you it's the truth. I get up every morning, walk into the kitchen, push the button on the coffee machine to start my coffee. And while I'm waiting on my coffee, I do 70 to 100 push-ups. I did it this morning. Now, my flesh doesn't like it. To this day, my flesh doesn't like it. I've been doing it now for three years. And this morning, before I even got out of the bed, my flesh was talking to me. And it was saying, just get your cup of coffee and go to the TV room Start reading your Bible, but skip that exercise part. You do it every day. You don't need to do those push-ups today. My flesh was talking to me when my head was still on the pillow. And I had to throw my legs out of the bed, brush my teeth, put on my robe, went into the kitchen, pushed the button on the coffee machine, and got down and started doing my exercises. I had to take authority over me. And you have to take authority over yourself. It's part of repentance. And by the way, you have to make this decision all the time. You may have to make it every day. I make it daily. So if you wake up and you don't feel like doing it, hey, join the club. You just have to take mastery of yourself. And that's what we're going to see in this verse. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26. Paul says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. We saw that this word run is a Greek word, treko. And this word treko means to run. But listen to this. It pictures one who's jumped into the race and who's pressing ahead with all of his might to reach a goal that is set before him. Well, today we're talking about exercise. You have to have a goal and you've got to run toward that goal that you're going to begin exercising. You may not be able to do a whole hour every day. You may not be able to do a lot of push-ups every day. You may be able to do one or two or five. Start with a goal, but start. Jump in the race. And as you go on in this verse, Paul says, I therefore so run not as uncertainly. That word uncertainly we've seen is a Greek word, adelos. This word means uncertainly, aimlessly, without direction, no plan or no aim. You have to have a goal to exercise or you're never going to exercise. You have to have a plan. Don't just figure it out along the way because if you do that, you won't do it. Don't run uncertainly. Start with a plan. For me, I began working out with somebody who could help me. I didn't even know how to work out. I didn't even know how to exercise. And in fact, when that man began to tell me what to do, it scared me because I thought I was going to hurt my back. And so he started with me very gently. I didn't start with a goal that I could not reach. I started with something that I could do. You need to start with what you can do. And as you become more mobile, little by little, begin to add to what you can do, change your goal, begin pushing the goal further and further and further. You're going to strengthen yourself. You're going to strengthen your core. But Paul goes on to say, so fight I not as one that beats the air. That word fight, it's the only time that word is used in the entire New Testament. Isn't that interesting? It's the word for a boxer who gives a knockout punch. And Paul is literally saying, if you're going to have a knockout punch, if you're really going to win this victory in your life, you have to do it as one that doesn't beat the air. The word beat is the Greek word dero. It was a word which described the grueling and barbaric practice of beating somebody, but the word air is the Greek word eros. It describes just the air. And here Paul is describing people who are just swinging, but they don't have a target. Paul says, hey, not me. I'm not a man running with no goal. I'm not just swinging and just talking with no target. I'm not just beating the air. I have a real target. I know what I'm after, and I'm going to give it a knockout punch. 
And that's what you have to make a decision about, about getting in shape physically. Denise? You know, I want to talk about that word victory, because when you start doing something physically for your body, <clears throat> it doesn't take long for your body to respond. Oh, the body responds very quickly. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's so wonderful. You start to feel stronger. You can move you can move more easily, and that makes you feel better about yourself. That makes you feel victorious. It makes you also feel victorious and add to your confidence that you did what you said you were going to do. You made a promise to yourself, and you did it. And that that builds confidence in us. And we can all do that. Just make one <clears throat> small goal and, and do it and do it. And then as Rick was talking about, don't listen to your thoughts and don't listen to your emotions because it's going to tell you you don't need it. It's going to tell you you don't feel like it. But after you do it, it's so victorious. I, I get on the elliptical <clears throat> every day for 20 minutes at this time, uh, at this time in my life right now. I, as I go, I go longer. But right now it's 20 minutes. And I do stretches. Well, it sounds like a little, it's about 25, 30 minutes, but you know what? It adds so much to my day. It gives me strength. It helps me sh hold my shoulders back. And, and as we get older, we have more to give. And I'm talking to somebody right now. You have so much to give, but we have to take care of this temple so that we're able to give it. Now, I, I want us to jump to this to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, because this was the verse I always used to not exercise. What does it say? It says, for bodily exercise profiteth little. That was the verse I always quoted, ah, bodily exercise. Even the Bible says it profits little. Really? Is that really what it says? Let's see what it says. First of all, bodily exercise. It is the Greek it's, it's two Greek words, the word soma, which is the Greek word for the body, and gymnasia, which is from the Greek word gymnazo. Listen to what it means. The word gymnazo depicts naked athletes who were preparing for competition in the athlete games. They believed that removing clothes was necessary to eliminate all hindrances that would impede their movements. The ancient world at the time that this was written believed discipline of the body, of the body, was one of the chief concerns and that it was essential. Exercise was essential for physical, mental, and spiritual advancement. Isn't that amazing? For spiritual, mental, physical advancement. These words in this verse, bodily exercise, picture exercise performed by one who is committed and who is willing to do whatever is necessary to develop physically and to get in shape. So we already find out physical exercise was believed to be necessary for physical, mental, and spiritual advancement. It wasn't frowned on. People really admired those who exercised. But the verse says it profits little. Well, hey, hold on for a minute. The word profits describes a moral obligation to do something as an obligation, to be indebted to do something. Used in this context, Context, it means one who has an absolute duty to exercise. The word little is a Greek word oligos. The word oligos means small, few, little. It's short-lived. In this context, it means exercise is necessary even if it is temporal. So rather than say, oh, bodily exercise profits little, it really means, you know, bodily exercise is for now. It has a short-lived effect because it mainly has to do with this life. But in context, bodily exercise is essential if you're going to develop physically, mentally, and spiritually. And in fact, the word profits here means you are morally obligated to do it. You are indebted to exercise. Is that amazing? Now, wait, let's jump over to 1 Thessalonians 4.4, 4, where Paul says, every one of you should know how to possess his vessel and sanctification and honor. The word possess is a Greek word which means to control, to possess, 
to manage or to win the mastery over. The word vessel is the same Greek word which would describe a utensil in the kitchen, any kind of an instrument, but in this verse, it's describing the human body. And Paul says we have to know how to manage our bodies, to control our bodies, to win the mastery of our bodies. Paul says we have to know how to do that. And he says our bodies are instruments. Well, if you don't take care of an instrument, if you don't clean it, if you don't keep it in good shape, it will rust, it will become unusable. It's the same way with the body. I just made a decision, you know what? I have a long race to win. This is the only body I have. And if I'm gonna run this race all the way to the end, then I have to do something with my instrument. I have to clean it. I've got to exercise it. I've got to use it. I've got to win the mastery over it. And the Apostle Paul goes on to say, we need to know how to possess our vessels, that's our body, in sanctification and honor. That word honor is the Greek word time. And the word time means your body is valuable. It's of great worth. It's honorable. It's something that is precious. Now, let me give you one more verse. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, the Apostle Paul said, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you and you have of God, and you are not your own. You're not your own. You belong to the Lord. Then in verse 20, he says, for you're bought with a price, so glorify God. And he says, in your body. Now, you don't have to become an Olympic racer today. Don't even think of it. It's not going to happen. You don't have to become a triathlete today. I don't, I'm not even interested in that. I'm just interested in strengthening my core and glorifying God in my body, looking good, feeling good, keeping my instrument in shape so I can run this race for a long time. And if that's what you're interested in too, then today is the best day for you to make a decision to begin to exercise. Just begin a little at a time, get yourself in shape so you'll be profitable to the Lord for years to come. We're out of time. We'll be back in just a moment and we're going to pray for you. Decisions, are they easy or difficult for you to make? Many people make decisions but don't keep them. In the five-part series, Decisions, Rick Renner will help you make decisions about your diet, fitness, finances, relationships, and your walk with God. If you're ready to lose weight, ready to start a new plan to exercise, to get your finances in shape, to improve your relationships, and to take your walk with God up a notch, then you need Decision to help you actually do it. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. This series will help you make the overdue decisions that you've wanted to make for a long time. In addition to this teaching series, you can also purchase a point of no return. In this book, Rick describes how to take steps into your God-designed future. God is waiting for you to get moving, but he will not take the steps of faith for you. You can do it, but you need to know how. That is what you'll discover in this timely book. Don't delay ordering your copy today. It will propel you into the plan God has planned for you. Order your copy of The Point of No Return today for only $15. Don't miss this special offer, Decisions and The Point of No Return. Call now or go to renner.org. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I am standing in the foyer of Rick Renner Ministries in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I just wish I could pick you up and bring you here to see all the wonderful ministry that is happening in this facility where we receive thousands and thousands of phone calls from people just like you who reach out to us for prayer and for teaching they can trust. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And we know that's our job. Our job is to feed many. And I wanna say thank you to you for everything you've helped us do with your giving. You helped us construct our studio, purchase this building. And now in phase three of our ministry expansion program, we're wanting to pay this facility off so we can liberate all that money to take the teaching of the Bible around the world on additional channels and venues. And by being a part of our giving team, you can really help us make this happen. 
If you're not already a part of our giving team, please pray about joining us. And together we can join hands and through teaching of the Bible and by ministering to people that reach out to us and by sending teaching products around the world, we can really change people's lives. And it's amazing to me that today it's never been easier to make an impact in somebody else's life right from where you are. Think about that. You don't even have to get out of your chair. Just go online or make a phone call and bam, by becoming a part of the giving team, you can do something that reaches beyond your world into somebody else's life to really make a difference. That is powerful. And according to the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus promises that if we'll go, or if we'll do what we can do to help others go with the Word of God, His power will show up in our lives. So thank you for praying about being a part of our giving team. And the moment you join, I want you to really expect the power of God to show up in your life. Denise and I have had such a good time today talking to you about exercising. Now tomorrow we're going to come back and we're going to talk to you about the next decision you need to make. I'm not going to tell you what it is. That's right. You got to tune in tomorrow to find out. But today we've been talking to you about controlling your body, managing your body, jumping in the race, making the decision to get in shape physically so that your body stays in shape for years and years to come. It is so bad when people begin to slump and people begin to get old at a young age. I see so many people that are behaving old when they're young. God wants you to live a long life. He wants you to live a full life. But if that's going to happen, you have to get up and physically move. We're talking to you about making decisions. So we're offering you our series called Decisions. Are you going to follow through this time? That's what it says. It comes with a great study guide. Be sure to order yours today. We're also offering you my book called The Point of No Return. Maybe this is your point of no return. You can do it. If God's calling you to get in shape, you can do it. Say, I can do it. You can. Order this book. It will encourage you to do it. You can tackle it. You can accomplish it. You just got to jump in the race. And for those who become partners, as always, we always send them my book, Life in the Combat Zone, and Denise's book, The Gift of Forgiveness. That's anybody who becomes a financial partner with our ministry. You can do that by going online or calling us right now. Thanks for being with us. And remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4, it says, where the word of a king is, there's power. This year, make the Word of God a priority in your life because it will release its power in your life. We'll see you in the next program. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. If you enjoyed this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.